Welcome to another Orbiter video. So in the previous video, we decided that we were going to go to the International Space Station and dock. So in the last video, all we did was take off from Cape Canaveral and get into a stable orbit. The plan was to get a 200 by 200 orbit, but uh, because I'm so out of practice, I failed to achieve that plan and ended up in an orbit with a apoapsis of 303.6. Now we can correct that, but I decided, you know what, I'm not going to do that. Uh, we're just going to go with uh, the result that we ended up with in the last video. So let's jump in and continue. So let me switch camera views here. And let's unpause. Oh yeah, I forgot about those, uh, that chatter. <laughs> I don't really like that stuff. I wanted to shut it off, but I forgot. So we'll go with it. Uh, I should say that because uh, because I'm coming back after so long away, I don't have all the complex uh, flight uh, models enabled, particularly non-spherical gravity sources, so this should be pretty easy um, in the past. And that, and that was always what I recommended for absolute beginners, you know, to don't have all the, uh, just don't have all those complex flight models turned on because it just makes things more difficult. And until you've had a couple of successes without all that stuff turned on, um, it's it's just gonna frustrate you and confuse you. So that means, uh, for example, that we can, we can orbit the planet, I think indefinitely, and we never have to worry about our relative inclination changing. Whereas if we had non-spherical gravity sources enabled, our relative inclination would fluctuate. Um, we also don't have to worry about the orbit of the ISS changing at different points in the orbit. So so things like that will be easier for us. So let's go ahead and uh, target the ISS on uh, orbit MFD, just to kind of see where it is. So uh, we are pretty much exactly on the other side of the planet from the ISS. Uh, we will catch up to it though, because our orbital period, boy, that chatter is annoying. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to turn that off at the moment because I'm not even sure how. Um, our orbital period is 5,364 seconds. The orbital period of the ISS is 5,500 seconds. So we'll gain, you know, 136 seconds per orbit. Uh, so we can, we can pick a point on the map to decide, you know, where it is. Um, like the, the time that we rendezvous, it would be nice if we can be on the day side of the planet because if you're on the night side, uh, you, just, you just can't see anything. It doesn't change the way anything works. It just visually, as I'm looking at the simulator, it's a lot easier if I, it's a lot, it's a lot more interesting at least if I can see what's going on. Like right now, if I look at the external view, you know, we have a nice, blue planet with cloud coverage and all that to look at but as I get over onto the night side here we'll just warp time forward a little bit it just everything goes pretty much completely pitch black outside and it's not as much you know it's not as interesting you know like as you can see in the video playback it just just nothing looks uh, nothing looks very good so come to think of it you know, I said that we weren't going to bother changing our APA back down to 200, but now I'm thinking I'm going to change my mind on that. And the reason is, if we have a balanced orbit, it's much easier for me to pinpoint uh, any spot on the map and say, I'm going to make this spot my high point, or I'm going to make this spot my low point. But right now my orbit is fairly lopsided, so it's going to be far harder to do that. So since we're coming up on periapsis here in just uh, 10 minutes, 11 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and balance out the orbit, uh, even though I said I wasn't going to. But now I think of, now that I think more about it, I have a good reason to do that. So let's go ahead and warp time forward to periapsis and come out of time warp here. Now we're down to 10, and we're going to go into the retrograde position because if we want to lower the other side of our orbit, we need to be in the retrograde position. 
and we don't need a whole lot of engine thrust, so we'll get we'll get fairly close to periapsis. And again, if I had burn time calculator installed and remembered how to use it, I would use that to to do what I'm about to do. But at the moment, we'll just do it manually, which is absolutely fine, and it's a good way, you know, it's, it's something an absolute beginner would be doing anyway. All right, so we're bringing down our apoapsis. Again, this isn't the, this isn't fuel efficient to do what I'm doing here, but you know I can't uh, I can't worry too much about such things at the moment. Maybe if I continue with orbiter for a while, that was a bit of a mistake. Absolutely. Lots of happy here. Oops, I was hitting it the wrong way. I got that those orbit lines up, and it makes it a little hard to see. Okay. Alright, let's turn off retrograde. Okay, so now that we have a, a, a balanced orbit, it, it means that any small adjustment I make to the position that I'm at right now, um, I should say any change in acceleration I make to the position I'm at right now will will impact what's uh, happening on the other side of the planet. So what I can do if I warp time forward, and I've got quite a few orbits that I can go around before I have to worry about catching up with the ISS, so I don't uh, so so I don't have to worry about overtaking it anytime soon anyway. So for example, now that I'm coming into sunrise, which I can see on the on, on map MFD down here, and I come around to prograde. So if I if I were to um, let me actually go down to 0 0.1 for a second. If I were to input just a little bit of uh, negative velocity, let's say you know uh, that that would make the point that I'm at right now. my my apoapsis because it would lower the other side of my orbit uh, conversely if I put in a little bit of forward velocity at this point it would make the point that I'm at right now my periapsis and the opposite side of my orbit would be my apoapsis and and the reason I would want to do that is just so that I can so that when I'm using a uh, sync orbit MFD I can pinpoint this location as my rendezvous point so that's actually what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go back to zero point, uh, or just go back to regular, um, regular time. And I'm just going to input a little bit of forward velocity, and you can see the point that I'm at right now becomes my periapsis. So that should be good enough. So my, my periapsis is about 200 kilometers, my apoapsis is about 207, so that gives me enough of a difference to be able to pinpoint one location on the globe as being the point that I want to rendezvous at. So what I'm saying is this point that I'm at right now is the part of the planet that I want to do my rendezvous on. All right, so what I want to know now, I want to know what is the altitude and actually hmm, let me think about this I should have chose this part right here as my apoapsis let me think so let me find out what the altitude of the ISS is at this point right here and then we'll, we'll raise our orbit here so we're actually we'll end up making this spot right here, we'll end up making this our apoapsis. So I'm going to warp time forward until the ISS is at that point. And right there, and I'm going to go down to 0 0.1 for a second, and I can see at this exact spot, the ISS is at 359.9, so about 360, but 359.9. So I want to raise that part of my orbit up to 359.9. And I've already passed uh, 
that spot there, so I'm gonna have to go all the way around the globe. But again, luckily uh, we're separated far enough from the ISS that I can make several orbits, so I can mess around with all these orbital maneuvers without worrying about overtaking the ISS. And this is something I would not have enjoyed doing, or I wouldn't have ever done this way. <laughs> and you know, when I was more familiar with all this stuff, and I was using like Transex to do my rendezvous, but uh, yeah, give me a break. <laughs> Cut me some slack, I hope. All right, so we're coming up to our apoapsis, which will actually become our periapsis. Let's go into the prograde position, and we want to raise the other side of our orbit to 359.9. So we're getting really close to our, our ap apoapsis. Let's go ahead and engage the main engine, and our positions are going to flip. And now we're going to bring up our apoapsis to 359.9. And we're getting close. Well, that was really close. Um, let's just translate the last little bit. Okay. So we've determined that this is the point in space where we're going to do the actual rendezvous. And we like that point because it means that we'll be on the side of the planet where we can see what we're doing. Now there's uh, we want to make sure that the time that I reach that point I hate this chatter. <laughs> we want to make sure that the point that, uh, that, that I should say the time that we reach that orbit and the time that the ISS reaches that orbit coincide and I remember we do that using, um, was it sync orbit? I think it's sync orbit. And we chose that our apoapsis would be our rendezvous point. So we want ships, apoapsis, and we have this uh, DT min. Um, now, if we add in the length, the transit, uh, how long can this be, like 18 or something? So we don't really want to worry about this DT min yet because we need to go around the planet a whole bunch of times before we're going to catch up to the ISS, before we're going to get relatively close to it. Um, so let's actually just go ahead and do that. Let's just orbit the planet for a while. Uh, we don't want to try to mess with anything else until we're closer. In fact, maybe I, maybe I shouldn't even have set up the rendezvous point until I was closer. But let's go ahead and just warp time forward at a thousand. And we're just gonna go around the planet a few times. I'm definitely gonna have to look into shutting that radio chatter off. That's driving me nuts. And you can see each time we go around, you know, we're just getting just ever so slightly closer. So it's gonna take a while. I don't really want to go to 10,000 though. Um, I don't know how well Orbiter's stepping system has evolved in the last between 2010 and 2016 version, but I remember uh, time warp, even in orbit, when you're near a planet, could cause problems. So I'm just going to be patient. And something I would always say in my videos that I would make, I would often say, is you know if you're not a patient person, Orbiter is not for you. Go play <laughs> something that's you know quick five minute game. These get these. Uh, you know, this is a simulation that takes time to learn and it takes time to execute. You know, because I got a lot of feedback from people that are like, yo, your videos are too long or this is boring, it's taking too long. It's like, well, this just isn't for you, you know. <laughs> so you can see uh, our DT min's down to 16, so that's pretty reasonable. So what we'll do, we're going to go around one or two more times, actually just this time. And coming up onto our apoapsis this time, we're going to do a small uh, burn in order to bring down the DT min to zero. In all likelihood, we're still far enough away. We're going to have to continue to correct the DT min after we do this burn. But for now, um, we'll, we'll get it down to zero. And that just means that, that our vessel and the ISS will be arriving at the same altitude at the same time. So we have uh, 40 seconds coming up, and this is going to be pretty small. Let's get in the prograde position. Honestly, I don't know if it's going to be prograde or retrograde. I know you can tell by looking at this, but uh, usually I just do a small burst and see if which way it's correcting. 
Okay, so it's that's so forward is incorrect, so I need to do a little bit of backwards. Uh, so I'm just going to use linear translation. Uh, six, five, that's probably close enough. And and there is there we are zero zero zero. And again, if we had um, if we had non-spherical gravity sources turned on, then we would this would slip constantly but since we don't have that enabled this will probably hold at zero although there is one more thing i'm going to check i can see that my relative inclination is off by just the tiniest bit and it doesn't matter but we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and correct it anyway so on this mfd on this side we're going to go ahead and bring up the aligned plane mfd and we're going to be coming up to the ascending node and when we get to the ascending node we'll use our memory trick a n equals a n or ascending node equals anti-normal. Now we don't really need to reorient our vessel because it's such a small amount. So really quick, we'll just go prograde for a moment just to make sure that the ship is level. And coming up to the, to the node here, uh, we need to burn down so we need to use a uh, linear translation i think it's eight it's either eight or two on the numeric keypad again i'll just have to press one and if it's wrong i'll go the other direction because it's a super small amount so actually it's not as small as i thought it would be but we're getting there yeah it is eight so eight's pushing our vessel down essentially so that's bringing our relative inclination down to zero now you can see we just have a tiny bit of estimated thrust left, so we'll just continue to thrust until it thinks that's also zero. There we are. Okay, now that might have had some small effect on our DT men, so let's check that. And it did, it was very small, and we, don't, we wouldn't even have to worry about that. But we'll go ahead and take care of it anyway. Uh, we will wait until we're closer to the ISS though. So now let's just go ahead and orbit and let time pass. And maybe when we get to where we're three orbits away, then we'll look at our, our DT min and our uh, relative inclination again. And, and it's always good to check those on the final couple of orbits. So on the next orbit around, I'll correct my DT min. I don't think that will have any impact on my uh, relative inclination. So we're coming up on apoapsis and that's the opportunity for us to correct our DT min. Okay, we're almost there. And here we are. So again, I don't know which direction I need to thrust, so I'm just going to try forwards first. And that seems wrong, so we're going to go backwards. Okay. So our DT min is zero, relative inclination zero. So that'll probably hold, but again, each time we go around, we'll check it, we'll check again, just to make sure. But now I think is a good time to set up our communications. I don't remember the transponder numbers, 130 something, I don't know. Uh, keyboard shortcut, I had to look it up, I couldn't remember it. It's control I to get up the object info. And I think there's other ways to get there, but control I is the quick way. And we'll go to vessel ISS. The long range transponder is 130, 130. And I think it's faster if I go backwards at this point. Maybe not. 130, 130. And the docking ports are down here and they're all free so we can pick any of them. So we'll SL plus to the next one. And uh, I wonder if port one is still upside down <laughs> on the ISS. Uh, it doesn't matter. So we'll go to 137.30. And uh, well, let's set up one more. One. Actually, this should be 137.40. And then we'll make this one 137.30. 
Okay, so we have a couple of uh, couple of docking port options when we get there. Um, so let's go ahead and close that out, and let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and go to the uh, docking MFD. We have the long range selected, so let's go ahead and put that information up on the HUD, even though we're not within that range yet. And just so I don't forget, it says nose cone, and since I see that now. I'm going to press K on the keyboard to go ahead and open the nose cone now. It's probably a bit early to be opening that, but I just don't want to forget about it when I get there. Uh, although I think it does warn you that your nose cone's closed, at least the XR2 does. Um, Alright, so now we're just going to warp time forward again, get a bit closer. Let's bring sync orbit back up just so we can keep an eye on our DT min and our relative inclination. We have uh, three more orbits, so the the main the main thing I want to check is that when I get close to apoapsis, I want to just keep an eye on that DT min. And again, it, it I don't it doesn't have to be perfectly zero. So we'll go ahead and skip this orbit, and we'll make an adjustment on this orbit since it did slip a little bit. All right, go into the prograde position. And as we get up here to Apoapsis, we'll do a correction. It's going to be a super small correction, and it's completely unnecessary, but, uh, you know, we're here. Why not do it? So I just used some control thrust there, control 6, just to get that down to zero. We'll go ahead and turn prograde off. And let's go ahead and uh, warp time forward again. And on the next orbit around, we'll check again. Because this is our last opportunity, because you can see the next orbit around will be uh, will be the one where we're actually caught up. So coming up to Apoapsis, let's go ahead and go into that prograde position. And of course we can see, since we have the docking HUD up, that we have the ISS. Uh, it's quite a ways out there, but we're getting there. It's, it's showing up now. It's close enough that we have it on our transponder. So we're going to go all the way down to about one second on the time to the apoapsis because we only have a 0.01 .01 correction to make. So that's definitely going to be a control thrust and not a uh, hey Mark, not a main. All right, there we are. Okay, so our relative inclination has stayed at zero. Our DT min is zero. So now we're just going to warp time forward until we uh, until we are at the ISS, and we'll do um, any kind of uh, thrust maneuvers that we need to do at that point to zero out our velocity. So while I'm thinking about that, let me open the retro doors of the. Delta glider, just in case I need to do a little bit of uh, thrusting, like uh, reverse thrusting. And let me bring up these MFDs just so I can see space a little bit better. All right, but let's warp time four because we still have, uh, you know, more than a half of an orbit to go. And what is our velocity going to be when we get there? Um, I don't think this MFD tells you. I think this only tells me what my current. Okay, and we don't need. I'm gonna say we don't need orbit HUD up anymore. Let's bring up. Um, let's bring up the docking. Okay, and we can see. This is our our distance is 200 kilometers. Our time to rendezvous is a thousand seconds away. Well, 1200 to 1100 thousand and so on. So we're getting close. Our relative velocity is coming down, which means that's less uh, thrust that we have to do to null out the difference. Looks like now it's starting to increase a little bit. All right, again, I would use burn time calculator to figure out how much time I need, but uh, I don't have it. Um, I do fear that I may have waited a bit too long 
takes them five kilometers out. So right now I'm trying to find the velocity vector. And since I'm so close, I'm actually going to go around to the negative velocity vector. I feel like I started this a bit too late, but uh, hopefully, and actually this is the wrong direction. Nope. Okay, no, it is the correct direction. So I want to point the velocity, I want to point the nose of the vessel exactly on the uh, center point and just thrust until my relative velocity is basically zero so luckily we did this in time again I think it's a really bad idea to be thrusting this much fuel directly at the ISS they would never do that in the real world because <laughs> you're spraying particles all over this thing at a really high velocity okay so there are velocities basically zero so let's go ahead and um, spin around oops you didn't see that. Now I meant to hit the uh, T to warp time forward so I could spin around faster, but I accidentally hit G. Okay, so that's rendezvous. So we're here. Um, I'm just going to get all lined up with the ISS, and I'm just going to use a little bit of linear translation to put the velocity vector on the ISS and then we'll call it done. Okay, so as I used to always say in my videos, wherever the velocity vector is pointed, that's where you're going. So currently we're moving towards the ISS at 1.34 meters per second. So that's a really comfortable, slow speed to be uh, to be approaching. So that's gonna be it for this part of this series, this little mini series that I'm putting together. So we'll go ahead and pause the simulator here. And when we come back in the next and final video, we'll complete the actual docking. So if you like this video, if you like seeing me fumble around with Orbiter after all this time, uh, please do hit that like button. And I will see you in the next video.